lucky. It's today the day we get them. Hey, good morning. Well guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. We are at base camp up here in Maine, getting all rigged up and ready to go. It is, let's see, time check, 624. In about 10 minutes, we're gonna leave to our next fishing expedition. We're probably gonna hit up a very big lake to search after more brook trout, more big brookies. The crazy thing is, the last video you guys saw you, you probably witnessed me catching that five pounder. Classic. Which by the way, if you haven't watched the video, check the link down below. But what's insane is although that five pound brook trout is humongous, they get even bigger. How big do they get, Spence? We hear they get up to seven, seven and a half. We've heard up to eight. And right at the local bait shop says six pounders, everybody's catching them. <laughs> Except. Meanwhile, we saw five and a little change yesterday and we're like, I don't know how they get any bigger. Well, here's the thing is like a lot of local native Mainers are probably like, what are you guys freaking out over five pounder? The thing is we're just not from around here. I didn't even know big brook trout existed, but today we're gonna go after that megalodon, that absolute giant. Along with that too, we're also gonna do a backwoods catch and cook, cook and catch, whatever you wanna call it. I guess last night, I, I, I don't really know when this happened. I messed my nose up too. I don't know what that came. I think it came from when I fell off the sled after I caught that brookie. I was a mess dude i was honestly all over the place freaking out talking to myself flying off sleds but hey it was all worth it for that giant brook trout which by the way you guys i'm going to get a replica mount and it will be the first ever fish mount in the cabin i just i just gotta figure out where i want to put it so you guys drop a comment below let me know where i should put that mount i'm thinking somewhere in this region maybe i think it would also look really cool above the uh the headspace going into the kitchen I don't know, you guys drop a comment. Where should I put the giant brook trout replica mount in the brand new cabin slash camp or whatever? We're gonna get all rigged up, ready to go, get hashtag dialed, and we'll meet you guys out in the ice. Stick with us, stay tuned, and enjoy. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Day three. One cool thing about doing this kind of fishing is when you're in such shallow water, you can literally look down the hole and see where these fish are relating to. Bunch of rocks down there. Brookies love rocks. Trout in general just like rocks. So what I'm doing is I'm setting my line with my smelt, and I'm visually seeing where that smelt is hanging out, opposed to just guessing. You can do this with a Vexar too, but it's way cooler just to look at it. I reckon that's probably in a good spot. He's just dangling. He's dangling. He's about to get eaten. He's gonna get eaten. 100% this guy's not gonna last long. Okay, cool. So once we got that going, we're gonna set this auto. So we have some different weather today. First day it was super cold, no wind. Second day it was warm on and off wind. And today it's just dumping down snow. And uh, we should have some different results. Whether they be better or worse, something's gonna be different. That's for sure. We're hopefully going to spank them. Spunk them. Anyway, as you may be able to tell, the bite's a little slow out here. We're not really getting much action. It's so weird too because like we have so much confidence in the spot. This is where I caught my big rookie yesterday. And like nothing, not a single flag, not even like a wind flag. It's just dead out here, but it's nice. We'll update you guys once we get into some action here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Anything going on over here? That went hard too. I fished that whole shoreline. I mean, a good amount of it. And nothing. She is nasty out there right now. Oh, 
Well gang, with the slow bite, we figured we'd take this moment to do a little bit of cooking. We got two things we're gonna cook up today on the ice. We got scallops and we got deer meat. So, nice little northeastern woods meal. While we wait, wait on these autos to go off, we only got a few hours left here. We wanna get out of here at like a safe time because the snow is not stopping and you do not wanna be out in this stuff in the dark because we've got like a 20 mile ride back to the car. So, a little dodgy. Anyway, Spence just went to get some matches because this is the jankiest lighter I think I've ever used. Well, you better hope these matches work. Trash, dude. Dude, that's not working. For all you folks at home in a survival situation, always bring matches. Oh, Jesus. They always waterproof. carry these. Oh, they're waterproof. Oh, you're good. These things are Ready? Yeah. Put it right by Well, since it's so damn windy, we've got like the worst matches on earth. We just took the dipstick from my sled, which obviously has 91 octane, which is very flammable in case you're wondering. And we're just dripping it on there, which is actually not a terrible idea. You just gotta be careful when you're doing it because you can light the whole dipstick on fire. That'd be great. Let me talk to you guys here. There's a lot of cool ways to do some, some catch and cooks or some cooks out in the ice. You guys saw in one of our last videos, we just did the tinfoil method. We waited for the embers or the flames to turn into coals and you just put some fish and some tinfoil. It's great. If you want to check that video out, link down below. But we're doing something a little bit different. We've got this, uh, I think it's a steel skillet. I believe it's steel. It's not cast iron. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to cook our scallops. And then we also have some, did you find the steak or no? Yeah, I did. Right here. Oh, we also got some deer steak as well. So we're doing a little bit of shurf and turf on the tundra scene. Uh, we're putting a little bit of water in the pan right now just to clean it out, but it should be good to go. Oh, that's stupid. Putting some butter in the pan. Okay, I guess we're just gonna cook the scallops. Ready? This is gonna be really quick. This is gonna be the quickest scallop we ever cooked. I mean, this isn't really going as planned. First of all, the pan's on fire. <laughs> Secondly, the pan's too hot too. It looked really bad there for a second. I was gonna cook these guys often. I'll try it, I'll eat it. <laughs> I thought it was a wash at first, but we just had to cool the pan down. Um, I also made the mistake of buying butter with olive oil, and olive oil is a little more flammable, so our pan literally caught on fire there. But that looks pretty damn good to me. I'm gonna give it an official taste test. There's so many different types of snacks we could have brought out on the, on the ice today. Hot dogs, brats, burgers. But we wanted to try something a little bit different. Oh. 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 Good. Dude. Some of the better scallops I've ever had. Okay. Looks can be deceiving. It doesn't. It may not look amazing, but that's that's cooked. That's good. It's delicious. Yeah, put a little bit of seasoning. I don't even think it needs seasoning, but that's good. Way better. Okay. Three bottles over there. Yeah. Second round, a lot better cooked, or cooked a lot better. We got the venny going as well. Not sure how the venny's going to turn on because it was frozen solid. But we're gonna try. We're gonna try it out. I mean, at least the scallops were, were a win. Those are so good. I wish you could t you guys could taste these because they're delicious. This right here is a good scallop. Camera guy. Camera guy, grab one. Now it's gonna try a scallop. What do you think? That's amazing. Not bad, dude. No, very good. Not bad for a couple of knuckleheads. Shout out to the homie Sammy Dice for leaving us some Benny in the cabin. Now we're going to try this venison, although there is a little bit of hair here and there. The fishing's no good, at least we can eat good. I thought this was going to be a wash because it was frozen solid when we put it on the pan. Oh my god. It's crazy uh, how butter and salt can go a long way. Dice, whoever butchered your deer for you. Maybe Dice likes the hair. <laughs> Maybe he's like, hey, just leave a little hair on there. Yeah, Alex, try that. Oh, really? Yeah, crush that. 
Mm. Oh man, it's That's some of the hair. better Venny I've actually had. <laughs> How weird is that? Pretty freaking good for so a you're deer. you saying you want more? I'll take another bite. What a guy. That's a Thanks, one. Spence. I'll take that. He's bad. Oh, so damn good. Okay. Well, guys, we're going to wrap into this up really quickly. Get everything all packed up. Get situated. Rip 20 miles back to where the car is at. And we're going to meet you guys back at the cabin. I love to stay out here and fish for another hour, but she's about to get really nasty. This snow may not look like much, but it is dodgy driving around this stuff uh, when it gets really, really dark out. You lose so much visibility. But anyway, we're going to destroy this. We'll see you guys back at the camp. Give me another piece. Here we go. Well guys, it's official we didn't get skunked today. I caught a mega bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! Got him! <laughs> oh well, we tried. Honestly, in all, it's been a great trip. I, I hate to say goodbye to Spence and obviously Alex who's been filming this whole endeavor. But you know, the brookies, there at the end really got the best of us. We got friggin' owned by them, which is unfortunate, but that is exactly why I bought a cabin up here, so we can do more of this more often. Let me know in the comment section below what we should chase after next. Do more brookie fishing, maybe do rainbows, maybe do largemouth, maybe do smallmouth, maybe do sturgeon, maybe striped bass in the summer, I don't know. That's where I need you guys' help. But uh, we're gonna get a few things touched up here for uh, future fishing trips, and then afterwards, we're gonna hit the hay and um, get some rest for the next mission. Hopefully hear lots of this, lots of drag peeling. <laughs> but uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I very much appreciate the view. Uh, be safe, stay warm, and as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. <laughs>